Hello everybody, this is Care Nation and we have one of my idol today. I cannot be the, I am the most happiest person. I, I'm almost out of words. We have Ivan Carmichael today joining us. How are you, Ivan? I'm great, Dave. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to be here with Care Nation. Yeah, I know everybody is excited to have you on the show. Uh, there's a lot that is to be learned from you. Somebody who has been in in the field of business entrepreneurship uh, you've been an author you've been recognized for your social media expertise uh, in different forums you've been invited you've been a speaker and the list goes on and on i read your book unbelievable your one word um that's this is this is the base of my care mission i don't know if you believe it or not but uh of last probably about last month or so uh, i was reading this book and uh, I did my soul searching. What is one word which is important for me as you guided? I did the exercise which you have written in your book. And I realized the word for me is care because my dad was very caring. He was giving a lot of, you know, giving back to the people and always helping people. So I was, I was revolving around helping, giving, uh, and all those things. And finally I said, hey, care, that is it, that is it. So I said, okay, I'm gonna build my community around care and, uh, I've got uh, you know, people joining in. I just started a few months back. But whatever I'm doing, the, all the motivation, all the drive, it has been double ever since I read your book. So first of all, big, big thank you from my side and on behalf of all my Care Nation community. That's cool. Well, and, and it's on you for doing the work. You know, a lot of people can read a book and not do anything. So, so big ups to you as well for taking action on it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. So Ivan, uh, you know, I've read a lot about you. I know your life story, how you went through struggle. I've read in this book uh, where you almost were about to give up on your dreams. And you know, you tell, you told your partner one day that I quit and you just went home and then you showed up and he of course did not ask you anything <laughs> and he welcomed you back. So I, I know about your story, but you know, if you can just share, what has it been uh, as an entrepreneur starting on your own right from 19 years old. So if you can just share your story a little bit for all the audience, it'll be really helpful. Sure, uh, I'll, I'll go through it quickly and then if there's an area you wanna dive deep on, let me know. Sure. Uh, I, I think I had entrepreneurial tendencies growing up my whole life. Uh, my first venture, venture, you know, I was five years old selling art in my neighborhood and I sold my neighbor and I got my first 10 cents uh, from that and I had baseball card stains and lemonade stains and all that kind of stuff. But I still thought I wanted to be a banker. You know, my parents were not entrepreneurs. I didn't have entrepreneurs around me. I uh, wasn't as popular back then and just I didn't know any, I didn't know any entrepreneurs. None of my friends had parents who were entrepreneurs and so I thought I'm gonna just get a corporate job. And uh, I was always the banker when I played Monopoly and so I thought I'm gonna be a banker. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. And then in university I connected with two, two uh, people who had started a business and uh, they invited me to join and be a part of their team and so I, was, I became an owner in that company and I had the toughest decision in my life to make between getting that big job, I had opportunities where making eighty to hundred thousand dollars starting salary versus starting off at a new company and making three hundred bucks a month. Uh, I decided to go for it because I didn't want to live with regret. I thought you know what if I don't if I don't take this company, I may not get it again. I could always get another job. It may not be the same job, but I could always get some kind of job. And uh, failed a lot at the beginning. Uh, I quit on my business partner for one night. Um, just felt, you know, the lowest lows that a human being I've ever, as a human being, I've ever felt. Uh, I wasn't prepared for the struggle of of being an entrepreneur. And mostly because I was putting in so much work and I wasn't getting any results out. And so it was it was hard and confusing and that's what made me want to quit. But um, I think at some point all entrepreneurs think about quitting. Uh, I woke up the next day and went back to work and just, just had to find another way to stand. Had to find another way to do it. Didn't want to give up on, on the dream that I had. And uh, we managed to turn that business around. I'm, I'm kind of fast forwarding a lot through here, but we turned it around. We started selling to 30 plus countries, sold to NASA, Johnson Johnson. We got acquired um, a little bit later. I became a venture capitalist and then I became, uh, I just wanted to help entrepreneurs. You know, I think, I think entrepreneurs will solve all the major problems of the world. 
I think uh, it's not a, we don't need to rely on governments and we don't need to rely on big corporations. It's going to be us. We solve the problems. And so I want to have my little piece of helping out a billion different entrepreneurs. And uh, I think I'm most well known for the YouTube channel right now, maybe secondly for the book and uh, just trying to help entrepreneurs go out and do their thing. Yeah, no, no. The, what you're doing is unbelievable. I think you, you've got more than 720,000 subscribers on YouTube until I checked 722, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. Uh, next goal is a million, and then uh, keep moving from there. I, I think it's important to have kind of goals that uh, are big and inspiring for you, but I also think you need to enjoy the climb and enjoy the process, enjoy doing the work, because if you don't enjoy the work and you're only chasing a goal, you're never going to be successful. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, here's the question which I think most of my audience would be, you know, thinking about is how how to come out of the rat race. I think most of the audience that is following me is either connected through uh, my previous work or profession or they're getting started in the corporate world. Uh, there's a big, big opportunity out there for all the entrepreneurs. So what is it that you would advise them uh, to build their own legacy, what what do, do they you know? What, what do you think they should start doing to live the life of freedom and choose what they want to do and not just uh, be part of the organization? I mean, there's nothing wrong to work for somebody, but what would you advise the, you know those guys who are ambitious and want to make it big someday as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think number one is this is the most common piece of advice that I've seen across all the famous entrepreneurs and people we profiled is you have to do the thing that you're passionate about. It has to be. Uh, it's maybe the most cliche answer, but it's also the most true. If you are, a lot of people want to leave a company because they just want to leave a company. They want to start a business to leave a life that they don't like. You know, I don't like my boss or I want to set my own hours or I don't want to have to go into an office place. And so my solution is I'm going to start my own business. If you're starting the business just trying to escape a life that you don't like, you're not going to have success. You have to want to build a new thing. And so that's a route thing you're deeply passionate about. You know, if it's just about the money, you're not going to be successful. It's got to be something you have a deep connection and deep passion for because uh, it's just so hard. It's just so insanely hard to get a business off the ground that if you don't love it, you're going to quit because it's just going to get too hard. You know, like if you don't enjoy interviewing people on your YouTube channel, you can only force yourself to do it for so long. And then you said, you know what, like I'm done. I, I, I want to do something that I enjoy. Um, and so that's the first. You have to build a business around something you're passionate about. Two, I would say just start. You know, if you're, you have this idea that you want to do and you're not doing it, a lot of times people build up this big thing in their mind that here's what my company looks like and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more complicated and more steps and becomes this huge thing that you never take any action on. Just start. There's no perfect first step. I made that mistake in my first business. It cost me $40 million that I was trying to build a perfect perfect plan and as a result did nothing and I lost a huge deal. Uh, and so I learned, my, I learned my lesson from that. But just start. Like, Start, do something. Your first step will probably be wrong. Like, Don't worry about it. You start and you do something the next day, you do something the next day. And so don't get so caught up with having the perfect step because what ends up happening is you see somebody two years later making tons of money off of your idea. Like, They just did something about it and you didn't. So do something. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to quit your job and go full time. There's lots of time you know, after hours. Use that time and do something. And then the third thing I would say is just be consistent. Uh, I, especially with entrepreneurs who are starting up, you find that they put a lot of work in and then they stop and then they take a week off. Then they put more work in and so this is constant up and down roller coaster where you have to be consistent on your work. Even if it's only an hour a day, you've got to put the time in to, to allow for momentum to build and you to be successful. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I think there's some of the great advices. And, and I think it reflects back to what even Steve Jobs said, right? Follow the passion. And, uh, you know, there will be a point where you will feel like quitting. Uh, the only thing which will save you is the passion and the love that you have for that cause. And I think the love, if, if you're doing, doing more for community or giving back to the world, you know, you would definitely be unstoppable. Uh, but if you're doing for money, as I read in your book, and as everybody, all the, 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 the legends say, Oprah Winfrey, Steve Jobs, everybody said that if you're getting into something for money, then your motivation will phase out pretty soon. It's just for money, right? If it is to do with 
giving more, you know, changing the landscape of, uh, you know, of how people look at things. I think that's that's something which is really, really important. So no, I think really, really great, uh, great inputs. Yeah, and just on that point, I think, uh, I think it's important to understand that money is still important. You know, I think a lot of people come up and think, well, money is evil and money is not something we should we should aspire to get. You know, money is important. There just has to be something above money. It can't be the number one. There's something above it that makes you go even if you weren't making money, but you still need to then figure out a way to make money. You know, for me, helping entrepreneurs, I started it just because I got asked. After I sold my business, I was 22 years old. It was like young entrepreneur success story. Uh, I got asked to do some speaking. And... I said, sure, why not? Like, if you don't know what to do, just say yes. Like, I, I like saying yes to things at least once and just see. Do you like it? Does it make you come alive? You don't know until you say yes. Otherwise, you just kind of stay in your bubble the whole time. <clears throat> so I said yes. I said yes to a lot of things. But uh, that was one, and I just I enjoyed it so much. And at my first event here in Toronto, I had three people show up to a free event that we were putting on that I partnered with a wow. local organization. And... You know, they promoted it and I promoted it and only three people showed up and it was free. And so you're thinking, well, how, how do I ever make a business out of this? If only three people show up to a free thing, how am I ever going to turn it into something that I can, you know, make some money from? Um, wow. But I just, I loved it. Like those three people, I loved helping them. I love, I just, there's something about entrepreneurs that just makes me come alive and I had to find a way to keep going. And eventually found a way to add enough value that I could make money from it and build a business around it. Um, and so I think it's the key. Like the passion is the has to be the seed of whatever business you end up getting into. Yeah, no, most definitely, most definitely. So that brings to my next question, which is the topic of the day. So most of the people uh, they, they start something, but the motivation phases out. Now I've realized, and I'm also writing a book, and it's almost going to be published called "80% Mindset, 20% Skills." Uh, it's a life-changing formula to become unstoppable in nine days. That's the, my big claim. How anybody can be unstoppable in nine days? That formula has worked for me. Uh, a lot of tips came from a lot of your videos, your book, and other you know books that I've read. Grant Cardone. I'm a big fan of Grant Cardone. Uh, 10x rule really changed my life. So. Uh, I know for sure now that I found my passion, my purpose, and I'm unstoppable. So what, what do you think that people should do to become unstoppable and do not give up on the dreams that they have? That's interesting. I'm, I'm excited to see the book. I, I would say it's even more than 80. Like it's, it's, it's 98 and 2 rule, right? Like you don't get the mindset right. It doesn't matter what the skills are. You know, you'll never go out and do it. Um, in terms of staying motivated, I think it's two things. I think one, you have to have the strong why, you have to have the strong passion, you've got to connect with it at a deep human level, otherwise you're going to quit. Like you, you'll only force yourself again to do something for so long, and if you feel like you're forcing it, you're gonna stop, it's just, you're just gonna stop, it's just too painful. And so you have to have the deep connection. And then two, I would say you need to have the, the habits, you need to have the environment, you need to have the rituals to help you stay motivated and excited on a regular basis and i think it happens too often that people will watch uh, will, will watch an interview like this or they'll watch a video or they'll read a book uh whether it's mine or yours or grants you know and you get all excited and then you're really productive but then the next day you wake up again and it's gone and that fire is where did it go and so whatever it is that you do that you experience or you listen to or you watch that makes you feel bold because we've all had those moments of boldness of feeling unstoppable it's just the problem is it's just moments it's not a consistent thing but these tiny moments that we've had where we felt bold and unstoppable whatever it was that got you to feel that then plan that into your daily routine in the morning so if, if reading about steve jobs gets you feeling unstoppable great read about him every morning if watching Dave's channel makes you feel unstoppable, great. How many videos do you have, Dave, on your channel? Right? Like, oh. go back and watch them, right? Like, start your day with Dave every day. Like, I didn't want to actually start the videos, the top tens on my channel. I just wanted to consume it, right? I wish you did it, Dave. Like, I just want to open my computer and boom, there are these beautiful videos for me to watch to help my unstoppable mindset daily. Uh, but 
you know, entrepreneurs, we don't complain. We're the ones who see people complaining and then we find a solution. And so I made the videos because nobody else was doing it. Uh, and so if you find a way to take that moment or those things that create the unstoppable moments in your life and then factor that into your daily routine and daily schedule, then you'll be able to consistently feel unstoppable. Because I don't think people naturally wake up and feel unstoppable. I don't wake up every day like unstoppable. Today's awesome. You know, I need to reset every day. And and my videos, my own videos, help me with that. That's why I do it. It's like I created them selfishly for me, for my own unstoppable mindset, and then I share them. Um, and so I think that's super important. Having the strong why, the passion of why you're doing this, and then creating a routine where you start your day with the thing that makes you feel unstoppable. Yeah, unbelievable, you know. Yeah, you just reminded me of the movie Rocky, you know, unstoppable <laughs> on the top and it runs. <laughs> yeah, so again, not, another important point that you brought up that you know, you know your why. And I, I was reading this book from Simon Sinek, uh, Start With Why. I'm yep. not sure if you've uh, read it, but uh, unbelievable book. It just puts, so many pers perspective in right frame of mind. He shared a lot of examples on how Apple became Apple because they knew their why was very strong. A lot of companies were focusing on how and what, you know, what they do, how they do. Uh, very often, the drive from the, the management executive, uh, you know, it, it, the why is not clear. It's very fuzzy, and that's where they just keep revolving around the. Features and benefits. I mean, in your book as well, you mentioned, right? Selling by uh, features, selling by values, and then, you know, doing your ultimate selling by, you know, finding out your one word and providing that. So if you can share some light on uh, on how, what, what, what do you think is the best way to grow as a person in knowledge? You know, what, what works for me is, you know, on an average, a millionaire or a CEO reads about 60 books in a year. So that's what I share with my audience. Hey, look, if a millionaire or CEO can read 60 books and he is super busy, what is stopping us from reading 100 books? You know, why don't you know, we, we do more and write down our goals? If it is working for, for a millionaire, if they're writing their goals down in the morning, what is stopping us from writing our goals in the morning? Health? Why ignore health, you know? Why it's not, health has nothing to do with money. You know, if you can eat food, you can eat clean food then, and you can work out. Uh, so yeah, what, what, so you, you mentioned about finding your why, about the daily habits and the purpose, right? Mm -hmm. how, how do you go about building those habits, healthy habits? You know, I, I know, you know, in my head, I know it's, it's good for me to read books. You know, I know in my head that it's important for me to stay motivated. How do I do it exactly? How do I build that habit? So back to your Rocky example. Yeah. One, I don't judge what it is that makes you come alive. And so I wouldn't, if, if there's something that really you find motivating, if it's watching Rocky or if it's listening to a certain song or whatever it is, like don't judge it and say that's stupid. If that's what makes you feel unstoppable, do it. Like if listening to Rocky, that song gets you pumped up, then every morning, Go for a run, put the song on in your ears and like cheer or whatever it is, right? And like you're rocky, you come back and you start working. Like whatever it is that gets you feeling that way, you want to go out and do it. Or run around your your house or up and down the stairs or whatever it is. Like don't judge it as it being stupid. If it works for you, go out and do it. Um, I think what you want to do then is find whatever the easiest uh, form of consumption is to get you there, that's what you want to do. So for me, Videos are, are the easiest and why I make so many videos because if you look at if you look at the guys behind me, you look at successful people, the rules aren't that different between what Steve Jobs says and what Michael Jordan says and what you know famous musician says. It's why I actually started covering non-entrepreneurs. When I first started it was only entrepreneurs and the first non-entrepreneur we did was Michael Jordan I think. Um, and yes, he's an entrepreneur and that he owns some businesses, but he's known as a basketball player. That's how he got his thing. And if you, if you listen to his views on success, it's, it's not that different than what all the entrepreneurs were saying. Like a lot of the principles keep coming back and back and back. And so what I find really helps me is when I hear the same message 
from lots of different successful people in slightly different ways, different words, different perspectives, but it's basically the same message. It starts to sink in more. You know, like if you have one conversation with somebody, that may not be enough for you to actually go up and make a change. And maybe, maybe you're ready. Maybe like enough is built up and you're ready to go and make the change. But chances are you're going to be inspired for a little bit and then it's going to fall off. To actually make the mindset change, you need to have an environment where that new mindset is constant. And so when all these successful people keep telling me the same thing, like, huh, I didn't hear it the first 10 times. But now it's like 15 times and 20 times and 50 times. Like maybe I maybe I should do this, right? And so I think being around success in general or whatever skill you want to learn, like if you want to learn confidence, being around confident people or watching people being confident, I think you'll actually learn way more from that than from reading a book of the seven ways to be confident. I think, I think watching people and being around them will transform you much more than reading a how-to list. And so the challenging becomes how do we create that positive environment for myself that automatically reinforces the mindset that I want on a daily basis. And so whatever the it's why whatever is easiest to consume because you'll find ways to put it off. So if if running is too too difficult in the morning or if finding the right podcast is too difficult or reading a book, like whatever is difficult, leave it, make it easy. For me, opening up YouTube and playing a video is easy. I like it. It yeah. makes me happy. So it's easy for me to do. And then immediately it starts shifting my mindset and, and programming me on a daily basis. Yeah, no, the, I think the beautiful point. So I think what works for me is uh, I read the audio book. I mean, I mean, I listen to audio book a lot, you know, wherever I'm in the gym, I'm traveling. Uh, I spoke about uh, integrating your, work and your personal life is so important. A lot of people ask me, hey Dave, you're doing a lot of things and you're alone, right? You don't have a big team, you're active, you're doing quotes, you're doing videos, you're writing a book, you're doing you know, seminars. How do you get time? And you also work for one of the company, so it's not just that you're just an entrepreneur. How do you manage time? I said, hey look, first you need to create time. You, know, you need to outsource whatever you're doing which is not being productive outsource and integrate so what gets me going is i've integrated the audiobooks in my life gymming working out cooking food uh, that is that is something which is you know getting me get me going so what is it that ivan listens on a daily basis which motivates you or makes you unstoppable apart from of course watching your own videos uh, that you compile on youtube <laughs> yeah so i think this is important uh, because it almost, I'll go through what I do, but it almost doesn't matter because you got to find a thing that works for you. So, you know, Dave's talking about listening to podcasts. I love it. You know, for me, I, I can't do podcasts because I'm a visual learner. It's it's the worst thing for me. So if, if somebody on my team is reading me an email, like, hey, what do you think about this email? And they read it. I need to see the email because if I just hear the words, it's not going to it's not going to register properly for me. Uh, some people just love learning through listening, and so podcast is great. So it's finding the thing that's right for you. Uh, for me, I start my day, my wife and I wake up, and we take our dog out for a walk. I like getting just outside. There's an energy, getting sunshine on me, you know, like it's a good way to wake up. Uh, we'll come inside and put on a song and just start dancing together. Oh, wow. We'll put on a song like Pitbull, some energetic music, and we're just, we just dance <laughs> for like five minutes. And nice. this is the thing, like, maybe that's crazy to the people who are listening, right? Like, don't judge. If you love Rocky, put on Rocky and dance around the room, right? We put on uh, upbeat, you know, pop kind of songs. And right now it's this Pitbull song. And uh, we just we just dance together. And so it's a nice moment between the two of us as well. Uh, I also find that music is a really quick way to shift your state. Like, a good song. What's the right song? Like, don't use my song. Get the song that makes you want to get up and just move, right? All yeah. of us have different favorite songs at the moment, so put that song on to start your day. Uh, and then we'll sit down and we'll, do, we'll put on another song and do four minutes of gratitude. Just like put your hand over your heart, think about three things that you're grateful for, and that's how we'll start. And then I'll, I'll start putting on my videos, like things, things I'm going through, um, reviewing content that's gonna go up on my channel, just being around highly successful people and entrepreneurs. Um, and so that's how I start my day every day for the most part, but like, who cares, right? Like, do you, you know, gratitude may be stupid to you. Taking your dog for a walk may not be important. 
you know, dancing may seem like the silliest thing ever. That's great. I like, it doesn't matter to me. Go do the thing that gets you excited, right? If like you get pumped up, you know, shaving with your gold plated shave, you know, razor, great. Like wake up and you tell yourself I'm gold, I'm money. Great. Like do that, whatever it is, like don't judge it as being wrong. Just go out and do it. Cause the, the goal is you want to feel like you're unstoppable every morning. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Now I think we only got, we only got six minutes, so I'm very cognizant. I can go on and on and I love chatting with you. I wish we can spend more time, but I'm just going to take some questions from the audience. Uh, Ankush, he says that whether there was a time when you, you thought that you would fail and how did you overcome that? I think you have to reposition what you think is failure because I think I'm going to fail every day. I do fail every day. You know, I fail and I succeed at the same time. I failed in this interview already like 10 times probably. I could have done something better, could have said something better. I'm going to put out videos on my channel that the series will fail. Like failure is not this ultimate thing and then you suck. Like I failed and produced more content that hasn't worked than most people will ever create, period. And so stop trying to avoid failure. Just learn from it and get better. Don't, don't take it as a personal statement of your value as a human being and just expect it. So I expect to fail. And then when it comes, I don't get too down about it. And I just say, okay, how do I learn from this and make it better? Yeah. You'll find yeah. like in any field, the people who have the most success are the ones who fail the most. You cannot avoid failure. So just expect it and build from it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Makes sense. All right, so next question comes from Akram Gaurav. Uh, he says that you have covered successful individuals from diverse fields on 10 rules. What is the most common trait or habit among all these personalities that has helped them overcome hurdles and achieve success? Uh, that's a great question, Macarand. I hope I pronounced that okay. Um, yes. I would say it's not what most people think. It's not that you don't have to be a type A personality. You don't have to be outgoing. You don't have to be a great salesperson. Uh, some, you don't have to be born with money or have gone to a great school, as lots of people think. Here's the thing. One, they followed their passion. Super most important thing. You have to do something. We've talked about that. Two, they got started. They did something, right? And three, they just persisted. That's the difference. Follow your passion, get started, and consistently follow through. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's, that's really good. Um, Sai Satish, you already asked that. Start. Uh, okay. Sai Satish is asking how to build global branding for a startup? Uh, I would I would first start on social media and I would pick the platform that best fits what you're good at. So I'd like being in front of a camera. So I would go YouTube. If you like writing, then go LinkedIn or go Medium. Like pick, pick the platform where you can shine and, and do it best. I would start with one network instead of trying to do them all because so many entrepreneurs are trying to be everywhere and they do everything really poorly. And so nothing ends up sticking. So pick the, the one platform where you can really shine and then start sharing and creating content that is deep and meaningful and personal to you. As, a, as an entrepreneur, your branding will be through your story. That's how you beat the big companies. Your personal journey, your personal story. You guys are watching this channel because you love Dave and what he's been through and what he's where he's trying to go and you want to follow Dave's journey, right? And so don't try to look like a corporation when you're a solo entrepreneur look like a human being and people will follow your story. That's your, that's how you stand out as an entrepreneur. Wow. I, I think beautiful point. And, and it completely resonates. I remember I did my video on my story, the life, uh, the struggle that I saw from coming from the not so, uh, well to do family in terms of finances to coming into corporate world, not being able to talk in English. I was at, I had a pathetic English, uh, all the different regional dialect I had, uh, you know, accent I had, and uh, you know, going from that tough times, sharing a room, uh, a dorm with ten or eleven other people uh, in in one you know three hundred square feet. Uh, so I think I think completely resonates, and I think people who ever watched that video, my struggle, I think they are they are the one who are really really connected with me. So it completely makes sense. So guys, the biggest takeaway uh, is you know talk about your story, and I completely agree that social media is is the ultimate thing. You know, there have been different shifts of technology but now this is the social media is is the ultimate thing and i've also started uh, my series of social samurai 
So I started my social media journey and uh, I want to help others, whoever is connected with me, to help them start writing blogs, start you know being open about sharing their stories and what they want to achieve and build their own brand. Because I did one article as well recently that the resumes would be things of past. You know, I think you also uh, you would agree because you know I read in your book that you don't hire people just based on the resume, right? You'd give them an exercise, and it was really exciting. And uh, you know that's how you choose because your belief and their belief matches, and that's how you recruit people. And uh, that could be done on social media. And you know before in, anybody steps into my room for an interview, I can judge whether the person is having the right belief system like me or not. He may be a great person with great, great experience, but not the right mindset with the not right belief system that I have, uh, then probably not a right fit. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I think also um, not to judge, you know, like if somebody comes in with a different belief system than I do, it's not that they don't have the right one. It's just not the right one for us together, right? Like they should go off and, and be somewhere else. If you're motivated by this, this is what you believe, great. You are you could be a great partner for somebody, but not for me, for somebody else. So it's not like they're wrong and I'm right. Just together, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Great. Uh, Ivan, I think we already reached the time. Can you take last one question? One last question. What do we got? All right. All right, last question from Sai Satish again. Uh, what is your daily schedule? Um, thank you, Sai. Uh, so I went through my morning, what I do every day as, as I start my day. From there, I found it really helpful to chunk my tasks. And so every day I do something differently. So, you know, Monday I'm working in one of the businesses that I invested in. Uh, Tuesday I'm planning everything for my YouTube channel. You know, Wednesday um, I just brought on somebody new on my team and we're we're planning our days together on Wednesday. Thursday is my public facing day. You know, so every day is something different. And what I find is it's super helpful for me. I have a hard time switching gears. Maybe you guys do it easy. I have a hard time switching gears. I have a hard time going from writing a book to doing an interview. You know, for me, writing a book is just I'm, I'm, I'm introvert mode. I'm just in my head. I'm thinking. I don't need to talk to anybody. And it takes me a while to get into the flow. And then I want to stay there for as long as possible. If you gave me 45 minutes, I couldn't make a lot of progress on my book. By the same token, you know, I'm mostly usually an introverted guy. It doesn't come across maybe in this kind of interview, but I get excited about entrepreneurship. And so Thursdays, I put all of my public facing day stuff, interviews, podcasts, you know, any media, YouTube stuff. Like it's always on a Thursday. I'm doing them like back to back to back to back. And the energy that I get from one, I move to the next and move to the next, move to the next. And so because I have a hard time switching between tasks, I would find myself losing a lot of time. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to pick one on this day. Here's what I mostly focus on. So this is the day I'm doing all my interviews. And then I line everything up. And sometimes that means you miss out. Like Thursday is my interview day. Somebody wants to do an interview on Friday. You know, sorry, I, I don't know. If it's, if it's Oprah Winfrey or somebody, maybe we'll make an exception. But, you know, for the most part. And it means that I lose on some things. Like I may lose out on an opportunity. And that's okay. Like you have to be willing to lose on the small opportunities because the time you're spending is focused on chasing the bigger ones. Yeah, no, amazing, amazing. I mean, I think really, really global nuggets have been dropped uh, you know, from your side. I think there's a lot to be learned for the Care Nation. Me, from on behalf of all my Care Nation, I just want to thank you for all the time that you shared, all the knowledge that you shared. Uh, just one last thing for my audience. I want to share that, guys, if you've not read this book, Please pick the book right away. Uh, I'm going to share the link where you can you know, buy the book uh, in the notes below. Uh, it's just really going to put your perspective in mind. You know, you, you're talking about being unstoppable. This is one way how you will become unstoppable once you figure out who you really are within. And if you're not subscribed to Ivan's channel, you're missing out a lot in life. Okay, so do subscribe um, and, and let's make Ivan's one million come become possible pretty soon you know and uh, you know if you like this video you want to share a lot of love please share this video with your friends uh, my goal and our care nation's goal is to help inspire 10 million people we are committed so Ivan thank you so much for everything and your every second it was very precious thanks for the love Dave I appreciate the time thank you so much you take care
Bye bye. All right, so guys, uh, amazing, amazing person, amazing personality. Uh, that's the person. That's the people. That those are the kind of people that I personally want to be connected with. And um, if you're somebody like me who wants to go ahead in life, uh, and if you really care for your future, and you really care for um, for others and giving back to the society, you got to get your game right. You need to build your mindset, which is unstoppable. And the way you would do it, as Ivan rightly mentioned, you got to figure out your why. Why you want to do what you want to do, your purpose. And read a lot of books, you know. Second is build your schedule as to what you're going to do every single day. Every successful person, as you rightly you know, saw Ivan, he plans his week and his month in advance. And I was trying to get hold of him and get this meeting or interview for almost a month or so. He's a busy person, right? But every second of his, whatever he's saying, he's done it. He's been there. He's seen tough times. So you got to find a purpose. You need to do what the successful people are doing. Surround yourself from positive people. And um, that's the only way. And, and of course, my title says 80% mindset, 20% skills. But now I think Ivan is right. It's not 80%, probably it's 90% mindset and probably 10% skills. So skills can be acquired. And as I always say, uh, just follow your dream, follow your passion. Um, you don't have to quit on your job, what you're doing. Uh, start building your base from now. And if this, after this, if you're not becoming social samurai, you're going to miss a lot in life, I'm telling you. You know, all the successful people, people are building their business online. I'm sure you will agree that people only buy from people they know. So if you want to get into business, get known. So the only way, the easiest way to get started without any money is start your blogging, YouTubing, vlogging, whatever you want to do. Just put the content out. And honestly, if you ask me, you don't have to worry about which platform is the best, which platform I should start. You should start with all the platforms, okay? Write a blog, make a checklist. One blog a day, one voice note a day for your group, one video recording a day or live streaming a day. Put it on YouTube, same thing. Multiple quotes, tweets on Instagram. So build your legacy one step at a time. This is high time, okay? So. I hope this interview was really, really helpful. Uh, and I promise that I'm going to do more such interviews with successful entrepreneurs and people who have really been there, done it, and were crushing it. Uh, this is just a beginning, okay? Um, this is one of my favorite interview, uh, one of my favorite person, Ivan. Uh, again, pick up the book, man. I'm telling you, it's going to really change your perspective about how you think about your business. Uh, it's amazing. And as always, this is your friend Dave Gadby, who is 100% committed in, uh, in inspiring more than 10 million people. So please help me. If, you, if you've not seen my journey, you can check out my video. But I'm committed and I'm sure my care nation is committed in inspiring more than 10 million people. Okay. So thank you so much, you awesome people. I'm going to see you every week with one more famous personality. Tomorrow we're gonna do one more interview with one of the famous person who was, uh, who was a celebrity on Indian television. So I'm not gonna disclose the name. I'm just follow my Facebook. Uh, I'm gonna share all the links. You can just look me up on Facebook, dave.gudvi.10 or you can email me at dave.gudvi, G-A-D-H-V-I 82 at gmail.com. Uh, and I'll be happy to connect with you and I will ensure that you stay motivated every single day with all the YouTube channels that I have built, the codes. If you want to be part of the Social Samurai, uh, you want to get my secrets on how I got started with social media and reaching out to successful people, I'm going to share my secrets with you only. Only top 100 people, first 100 people will get the specific blueprint of how to build your social media brand, okay? Brand is everything. So do share your email ID in the comment box or your WhatsApp number if you wanna be connected with the Care Nation, the WhatsApp group who actually keeps motivated each other, uh, you know, sharing a lot of motivational codes. It's the group like no 
other group only talks about motivation inspiration how to get it in life okay so thank you so much once again it was wonderful to have you all wonderful audience thank you for all your questions and uh, stay tuned for more exciting interviews all right thank you so much be wonderful do care for yourself your future do care for your family do care for your health and most importantly care for others that's the only true wealth that you will accumulate in your lifetime. All right, take care. Love you guys.